Inshallah, it's a blessed evening. We celebrate the birth of the greatest human being who ever lived, will ever live, our Master Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inshallah Ta'ala, just say a few things, Inshallah. I don't know any Farsi poetry, so inshallah. I'll say a few things, Inshallah. I'll quote some. So the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is our greatest benefactor from humanity. And he benefits us in all three stages of his life. I mean, there's, there's more than three stages, but the three stages that we're familiar with, his hayat, uh, dunyawiya, that the Prophet Wasallam is, when he was with the Sahaba, uh, he was asking forgiveness for his ummah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكِ فَعْفُوا عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ it is part of the incredible mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's so much emphasis in the Arabic, it's hard to even, no translation is even close. It is the incredible, incredible mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have lean, you have gentleness. If you were harsh or hard-hearted, غليد al-qalb, thick of heart, you would have seen people flee from your presence. This is very important, you know to internalize the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, especially with our families, especially men with wives. This is very, very important. Women are compromised physically. Men are more, more stoic than women, generally. And the Prophet وسلم, he treated his wives with kindness, with mercy. This is extremely important. The inward sunnah. From his signs is that he made from you spouses that you might live sakina that you have sakina with your spouses. The house is called the meskan. It's a place of security for the woman. If she doesn't feel like her house is a place of security and safety, then the husband has failed in his duty of being a husband. This is extremely important. How did our mother Aisha, radiallahu anha, describe the Prophet Kana Rajulan min al Rajul. He was Basharan min al Bashar. He was a man from among the men. A great man. Lam yakun Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fahishan wa lamutu fahishan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever used uh, filthy language. He never threatened anyone in the household. He never used bad language. He never uh, scared his, his wives, this type of thing. This is extremely important. Uh, if you had been harsh, people would have fled from you. You see, the Prophet ﷺ, people did not flee from him. He brought people together. Look at his Sahaba. Where are they from? All over the world. Look at the Muslim Ummah. His message is uniting everybody. Many, many people in the West right now converting to Islam for different reasons. One reason is all of these Amarat al Sa'a are coming true. <laughs> Everything he says in this, even these, some of these hadith are very weak, but they come true. Of course, a weak hadith is not muldur. There's just a little problem here and there. It's not, a, it's not an A plus hadith, but these things come true, and people are starting to notice these things. Fa'fu anhum, forgive them. Wastaghfir lahum. And the ulama say, Imam al Razi, rahimullah, he says, Fa'fu anhum, forgive them for things that they do against you personally. But things that they do against Allah, ask forgiveness for them. Make istighfar for them. The Prophet ﷺ in his life, his hayat dunyawiya, was making istighfar for his ummah. Her mother Aisha radiallahu anha said that the Prophet ﷺ was standing all night. Qama, he was, he, was, he was standing the ayatin, layla, one ayah he was reciting the whole night. One ayah, in tu'adhibhum fa'innahum ibaduk. Wa in taghfir lahum fa'innaka anta al-aziz al-hakim. The end of al-ma'idah. If you forgive them, if you punish them, they are your servants. But if you forgive them, then you are great and wise. And she said, he repeated this ayah over and over and over and over. Then he collapsed into sajda and heard him say, Ummati, Ummati, Ya Rab, Ummati. So he makes istighfar for his ummah during his life. He makes istighfar for his ummah in his hayat barzakhiyah, in the life he is in now. So, what does, the, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسُهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمْ الرَّسُولِ 
That if only when they had wronged their, their selves, they had come to you and Allah subhanahu and they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, and then the messenger asked forgiveness for them, they would have found Allah uh, relenting and merciful. Go to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa He's asking forgiveness for us. In his state right now, he's asking forgiveness for us. This hadith is sound hadith that your deeds are presented to me. If I see good, I praise Allah. If I see other than that, then I ask Allah to forgive you. And then on the Yom Al Qiyamah, his hayat ukhrawiya. He asks forgiveness for his ummah. He is the shafi' wal mushaffa'. He is the, the intercessor and the one whose intercessor is accepted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept his intercession for his ummah. So, first and foremost, let's increase in our love for the Messenger وسلم, and realize what he's done for us. And then we must internalize his sunnah. He said, if the Dajjal comes to you, and I am among you, then I will contend with him. Right? But another way to read this is, I am in you, I've internalized. You have internalized me. My sunnah is in you. Right? My khuluq is in you. My jamal is in you. My jalal is in you. These things are within you. You've internalized them. The jaw can't have any effect on you. I will contend on your behalf. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.